Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you today? Life is good, my friend. Life is good. We're having, uh, towards the end of the summer here, we got people going back to cut my girls are getting ready to go to college next week, next Friday, actually, so I got one more week here. Uh, business is good, so that's kind of good. Uh, business is mixed for other people, though, right? It's kind of, we're still kind of coming out of this crisis, right? I think the, uh, the, so uh, this is episode 85. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, people are coming out of this COVID crisis. Some are like skyrocketing and some are stuck. And so that's kind of what we're going to, a little bit, we're not going to talk about COVID or anything like that. No, no, no. We're gonna, this is good. So uh, evaluating your marketing message. So and the reason of, for that. Evaluating your marketing message is if you're if you're coming out of COVID and you're stuck, well, if you get your marketing message right, you won't be stuck any longer. Time to work on your marketing message. So I've got this whole little form here, uh, conversion equation evaluator that we'll use kind of as the basis. But and I use a real life example. So Patty uh, got an email from a, a travel agent friend of hers that was the concept was a good concept but it wasn't uh, presented well. The marketing message, she said she actually bypassed it, didn't even look at it, happened to look at it later on by chance, right? Because it wasn't compelling enough of a marketing message, right? Um, so the brief outline we got, um, what we talk about for our uh, uh, conversion equation is uh, interrupt, engage, educate, and offer, okay? And I know you've got the pasture formula that you've talked about with Ray Edwards, so we'll compare those two. So we'll just present them both, right? So, so interrupt is basically your headline and, and here, you know, here's your headline. Here's the reason to pay attention to me. So that's your interrupt. Engage is you're promising to educate them. It's your sub headline. Um, number three is educate. So you're educating them. You're building your case. You're educating them on helping them make their decision, right? And then your offer, you're, you're making an offer, an irresistible offer, a risk reversal offer, you're trying to get them to take action, right? And so that compares very similar to your pastor. Give us yeah. your, your pastor. So the pastor formula, okay, is, is the same thing. Now, um, the interrupt part is how you, okay, so this is the, probably the most important thing that um, your headline. Um, the headline is the most important thing in all of your copy because it has to present the big idea. So, um, and or the big pro the big idea is you're going to solve this problem. You're going to make somebody's yeah. life better. So the headline, but under uh, the pastor formula, um, which is Ray Edwards, that's his, um, his format for following this interrupt, engage, educate offer is right. it starts with the person problem pain. So right. um, you, that is a great place to start with your headline and your interrupt. Um, then you move into their aspirations, which is the A, um, and you amplify that theme. You want to make them almost like if a doctor can make you feel more sick to where you're begging for the prescription, that's you do that. You amplify yes, the theme. Right, right. And then, and then you move into the S, which is you want to tell a story of the solution. I think too many people leave out story. And, um, you know, um, it doesn't matter what you do if – some of, some of the things we learned in school, the thing we will remember the most is some of the stories we were oh, told. Oh, sure, sure. The stories, are, and the, then the T is the transformation. And the easiest way to tell about transformation is, is with testimony, other people's testimony or your own. Because a lot of people, what, I, what do I do if I don't have any testimonials? Well, you better tell your own transformation story, how you came upon this or what have you. And then the O again is offered on both messages you need an offer you got to offer them something but you don't want to start with the offer right too many commercials on tv start with the offer and you you got to get through all of the rest first you got to interrupt because the commercial is always interrupting and then the r in pastor is ask for a response or or, or bring the response so we're going to go through this uh yeah. message looking at it from both ways and yeah and so look at it from both ways and i got like a little sc a score sheet here all right so the first thing would be interrupt you know what's the headline um, what's the intro? So here was the intro, uh, saying hello, oh shoot, uh, sharing some helpful info as we consider travel. Okay. That's, that's the, that's the headline. That's the email headline, sharing, sharing some helpful info. info as we consider travel. Okay. So if it's you terrible, it's terrible. You How do we evaluate that? 
No, if you saw that in the subject line, you are not going to open that email. Yeah, no, she passed right in, by there. Did this come in a mail or did this come in yeah, an email? email? Just email. Email. So she, that's what Patty said. She said she looked, passed right by it, right? So I would say I would give that a zero, no headline at all, or I'd give it a one point company name or a play on words, but it does nothing to compel the reader to listen or continue. So Patty said she saw that email and she just, you know, went right past it, right? As opposed to a, a five to get five points, you can get on scale, each of them of these is one to five. Five, a powerhouse headline is powerfully worded and hits the hot buttons passionately. Are right? you ready to get back to traveling again? You know, are you, yes. um, is it time to travel yet? Is it safe to travel yet? Um, all of these Any things of those that, would be great, right? That are questions in people's minds. So yeah. tired, tired of being stuck at home. Are you, yeah. Are you ready to go on vacation? Um, yeah. and, and don't know where it's safe from COVID. I mean, right. get a headline, that's a subject line that's going to get somebody to click on that thing. Exactly. Right. So more passion, any of those would work for us, right? You know, ready to travel, ready to travel again, looking to travel again. Where can you travel now? Any of those kind of things engage. So the next one is kind of your sub headline. So if you have a, zero one or two points you, you get a zero for this section all right so so there's a zero on this section because we didn't have a very good uh, compelling headline so it doesn't matter what our second statement is right but a, a second one would be you know there's you still can have the ability to travel you just got to know where to look right or, or something like that would be a good second headline right oh the subhead yeah the subheadline especially if your offer is going to lead them somewhere you know, in a, let's say you're going to sell a trip to Israel. I don't know where you're going to sell. Not Beirut, but, uh, you know, uh, but um, you're going to sell a trip to somewhere. Maybe it's an island in the Caribbean or whatever. Um, you could say the Caribbean has the lowest, you know, you could say, is it safe to, whatever, your headline, but your subhead could be, did you know the Caribbean has the lowest whatever cases right, of COVID? Right. And this is the, this subheadline is great because the theme of this is domestic U.S. luxury travel. So, Instead of going to the Europe, you can, we can go here in the U.S. and have just as much fun, right? Yeah. That, that's kind of the theme of this email, which was a good, once you start reading it, it's actually really good. So it's almost like, you know, tired of traveling, ready to travel. We need a good, you know, you're ready to travel. And then the subheadline: there's great places to visit here in the U.S. Or visit Europe, but here in the U.S. Or, you know, some little play on words like that, right? So a five on a subheadline would be reader is eagerly engaged Quick scanning reveals uh, congruence and, 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 and it makes you want to read more, okay? So like we said, maybe it's, you know, ready to travel, any of those things we said, the subheadline might be, because this kind of theme is travel here in the U.S. as opposed, so it might be, you know, can't go to Europe, but you can't, but, but there's some great places here, right, in the U.S. Or And I would bring out the pain. Okay, so if the pain of, of not traveling, but what, what's a pain point that maybe people had before this happened that wouldn't be there now so that would bring in pain and aspiration and in 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 so it might yeah. be are you don't you hate crowds when you travel well now guess what or tired of being stuck at home like yeah. that's a good pain right yeah, tired of being stuck at home you've been cooped up all summer something to that effect right so now we get into the engaged profit i'm sorry the educate so we did interrupt engage our educate so now you're building your case right and so it's it's you know again really cool stuff. I'm looking at the email here and they have, these are kind of neat, catchy. And again, I'm not mentioning who said them. instead of London, try Boston. And they have a little paragraph instead of Bordeaux, try Virginia, right? Instead of Scotland, try Vermont, right? So they're neat little internal education. Once we get into it, but again, you didn't even catch my to read the right. Yeah. Instead of, Africa Safari, how about Southwest New Mexico or Montana, right? Uh, luxury motor coach adventure, right? These are actually pretty neat little cases, right? So, so um, and educate, a uh, number five would be ex execute solid, well-rounded case of why you would want to travel here in the U.S. Uh, a judge and jury would be proudly say, hey, I'd have to be an idiot not to choose one of these trips. Well, you know, um, one of the things that I, well, as you were going through those, I'm like, wait a second, each one of these could be one email. Absolutely. Yes. And if you, if you set it up what they would call a sign, a Seinfeld sequence, the, the show at the end of every episode, they hook you for the next episode. Well, 
that's you could do that with wait till you see what, oh, what yes. Boston has to offer. And then, you know, the next one is, yeah. hey, by You're the way, thinking about going to London, wait till we see where, yeah. you know, and then I'll show you a place that you'll love yeah. way better than yes. South yeah. Africa. Looking for a golf trip to Scotland, but can't travel overseas. Wait till the next email. Yeah, exactly. So wow. those are, those are, um, how do I say this? It sounds like this person, whoever sent the email, is trying to be the jack of all trades and only send one email. Whereas you can build more relationship by sending more emails. Well, that's a great point. Because there's some other stuff in here that's totally unrelated. Um, should you book a flight to somewhere that's currently closed to Americans? Um, banned today doesn't mean banned tomorrow. Uh, free date changes, like why it's okay to book planes. But that's a whole other different email as opposed to the theme of the email really was, we can't go overseas. Let's find some cool places to travel here in the U.S., right? And certainly, you could use those other things as a lead magnet. Hey, what yes. you know, if, hey, would you like to know everything you need to know about international travel right now? Here's a free download so that right. you can get them in, you know. Well, that's a great point. So that leads into the offer, right? So, so educate, we would be educating you on great trips here in the U.S. that are similar to Europe, right? Yeah. In any way we want to do that. And then your offer could be the guide on, you know, five blessed trips in the United States or five luxury trips to the U.S. or five trips in the U.S. that are better than Europe. That could be your offer. That could be your lead magnet because we're not trying to get you to book the trip today. We just want you to show me some interest and raise your hand. And so click here for the guide to the, you know, uh, five best U.S. luxury travel, right? Or, or this might be a magazine, luxury travel magazines, top five U.S. destinations. Yeah. That could be your offer, your lead magnet. Yeah, what's what's interesting, or the offer could be, you're offering a single trip, you know, um, and there's, it's a discounted trip or what have you. I don't know how, um, we don't know what their offer is here, but we're just talking about- Yeah, uh, just a, a US travel, that'd be pretty cool, yeah. So, um, so uh, and, uh, this is a, a number five to get five points. So, so we don't really have an offer on here. Her offer is, not gonna pick, not gonna mention names, um, I think even more than exploring the, the world, uh, let's explore here at home. If you're planning an adventure and you'd like some help, give us a call. That's, that's the call to action. Give us a call. Give us a call. So, um, yeah, that's awful. That's so awful. That's no offer at all. That's pretty much your contact information. That's like a zero or a one pointer and as opposed to, is. yeah, excellent, obvious choice. For now in the future, irresistible and compelling offer for me to opt in or to, or to continue nurturing my interest. Right? Yeah. Like you said, a lead magnet. What's yeah, a great no, lead magnet? No scarcity whatsoever in that email. They, they're trying to impose, uh, whoever wrote this, they're, they're trying to impose their thoughts on you. In other, in other words, not letting you think that your thoughts, hey, I think this is a great time to travel in the U.S. No, the reader should actually feel that way when they're done reading your email. Yes, exactly you right. You have to impose it because technically you do when you write good copy. Right, right. And By you made a great point earlier. This could have been like a whole series, you know. Uh, you know, tired of being cooped up. That's your headline, right? Great places to travel, you know, make you feel like a Europe, but, but stay at home, right? Or, or whatever, stay in the U.S., right? And then we could educate you on one trip, you know, Boston, you know, thinking of London, try Boston, right? That could be one email or it could be, like we said, educate. There's three, you know, three great places to go. Your lead magnet, your offer could be, you know, five best places to travel in the U.S., right? Or it could be learn more about the five best places to travel in the U.S., right? That could be your offer. It could be testimonials could have been in that education part, you know, interview one of your clients who did go to Boston and said, man, I had forgotten how awesome Boston was. You know, that's our version. That's that's our oldest city or, or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the appeal to Boston is. I'm just, I didn't read the actual email, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That could be like, oh yeah. And then you got your testimony. I had a great, so, so for me, like we're, we're funny because uh, when we used to do all this traveling with my girls travel soccer, we would take a segue tour in all these different cities. So, but yeah, the golf tournament this week, the PGA championships in San Francisco. One of my fondest memories, we did a San Francisco trip, right? Was a segue tour in San Francisco up to the Koi Tower and then whatever that, uh, what's the busy, the little curvy road. Uh, there's a curvy road in San Francisco that's really cool. Anyway, you get down that on your thing. That's what I remember. That would be a great testimonial if you had San Francisco in there. Oh, we had a great, you know, we did, we, we did an electric bike tour across the uh, San Francisco, the, the bridge. 
Oh, you were able to bike across? Yes. Those it was are- awesome. But that's testimony. See, That'd be a testimony. You could put that into like, you know, go to San Francisco and here are the reasons to go to San Francisco. And then the testimony could be, you know, I had a client today and I would say, oh, we had a great time with my family. We took a bike across the Golden Gate Ridge. It was, all, you know, it was awesome. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. So, I mean, and that's but, an activity you could do during... During COVID, right? You'd have to take the plane, I guess, to get on there. But, you know, in general, it's an outdoor kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Or you could but, drop it. It would be a very long drive. Yeah. So, so you go through this thing. So we would have said, interrupt, you know, your, your headline. It was terrible. No headline at all, or really just the play on names. You got zero to one point. And then because you're engaged in this evaluation, because number one, your your interrupt was so bad, you really get zero points. It says if you have less than three points, you get a zero over here. So you got zero points. Then educate, build in your case. It wasn't bad. They had uh, case points that were begun, but not really fully developed or quantified. So I kind of would have given them kind of like two or a three on here. Cause you know, those headline in bad instead of London try Boston. And there's a little paragraph on it. It was, you know, it's a two or three pointer um, over a uh, risk. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Offer. What was the offer? Call me. If you're interested, call, you know, me. call me. That's like a zero. That's like a one. Right. Um, so then you take those, that's four point. Then the other one, how is powerful. Now you look overall powerful, passionate, precise, and elegant format. No, this is really kind of a zero total mess. Try again. Right. So you take those points, that's probably like two, three, four, five, six, that's probably five points. Then you, because there were five evaluation points, then you divide it by five. So then how many points do you have? Basically a one, right? And if you have less, if you have less than a, a three or less, if the grade is below three, you must rework the ad. So obviously this, 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 this is like a one. Yeah, right? it, it, one is generous, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the point, behind that is is not that we're beating up on the ad all the components of a good ad were there so you they have all the things that you that have everything in here you just have to look at it from the reader's standpoint and how to make you got to get them engaged or they're they're not going to read the ad like patty just blew it up so if they're not engaged they're done and that's the perfect that's a great way what you just said was the the, the right information's here like, like the travel agent's already done her homework that she's already said here are some great places to go in in the states right that was the hard work was finding those and 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 it just wasn't presented in the format that would be you know educate interrupt engage educate and offer it just wasn't in the right format it's the right information not in the right format and therefore X amount of people are just going to skip right over it. You made a great point. This could have been a whole series. Mm-hmm. You made a great point. There's other information in the email that could have been for drip campaign, right? You know, should you book the plane ticket now or not? What if San Francisco falls into a, you know, the restricted thing and I don't want to go anymore. Can I change my flights? That could have been a whole nother drip email campaign. Don't worry about it because if you're worried about booking flights. Yeah, because they're not, if you're in the travel industry and you put an offer out at the end of your email, well, maybe they don't answer this email. So you should have a long series that just keeps going. Just and keeps going. That's so not a one and done. That's exactly right. It, it should be longer and maybe not longer emails. Maybe you shorten them so that people are like reading them. Hey, honey, I yeah. never thought of, I never thought of going to, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yeah, or Santa Fe. Yeah, exactly. Or or even Boston for that matter. So, and and that goes into, like we said, create the lead magnet. And lead magnet could be, like we said, just what are the, you know, five trips, three trips, five, you know, two family trips. You know, I'm about to be an empty nester. So you could market to me as, you know, empty nester trips. You know, you're, you know, you're newly empty nester. You know, it's like being a newlywed, but now you're newly empty nester. You know, where, you know, five places to take your wife on a, now that you're an empty nester, right? That would actually be a pretty cool way to market to me right now, right? Yeah. So it's kind of fun, but it's interesting. So I was just going to run through one other example. I got a little headline thing over here that I thought would be fun. And it was, uh, it's for a daycare. I got a whole workbook on this stuff. It's pretty neat. And it was more like, um, where do I get this over here? Do, 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 do. Um, but you could say, uh, oh, where's a quick one? Um, I was just going to give you another example. So here's one that's kind of, you know, oh, that's kind of funny. Well, in the, you know, there's also the, um, 
the ADA model, A-I-D-A. -A. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's very okay. similar. It's awareness, awareness, interest, desire, action. Okay. So, same idea, um, but um, I don't use awareness. I use it as attention. So like you got interrupt. So some people use awareness as the first word. I'd say you want attention. So that's what a headline is supposed to do. It's, a, it's another format of, of writing compelling copy. Again, if we took in the same thing, it's, it's still attention, interest, then you've got a decision in there, which is, you know, ultimately, um, that's the, you know, I say it's a decision, but you want to create desire, which is what you're going to do when you educate. And then you're just going to take action. No matter what, you've you have to have it. a formula to follow that your prospect reads it and goes, wow, I want to do this, or maybe I don't want to do this right now. But at the same time, they're interested in your what you wrote. They might look at the next one. Right. Right. And so, you know, if you look at it, we got like a, 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 you know, a worksheet or a program, you can do this, you know, who's your target market. So I got this daycare one I'm pulling up over here on the other computer. Uh, who's your target market, working parents, what are their primary uh, concerns or oh, I'm sorry, who are your primary competitors, local daycare centers, preschools, child learning centers. This is for a daycare center. Um, what would cause somebody to need this in the first place? Mom or dad or both parents will be working. They need a place to take care of their child. They want to feel like their child will get the same care and attention as if they stayed at home with mom. So then you came up with these, you know, what are some hot buttons for them? It was really, and so here are some headlines. You tell me you think, I think these are good headlines, right? So it was like, uh, you're trying to come up with a whole series of ads, right? We actually came up with, I think six or seven in this case that we did with this guy. Um, here's the headline. You tell me you like this headline. How to avoid daycare centers full of freaks and incompetent staff members. So the, 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 the hot button there is, you know, you want to make sure that they screen their staff. You know, you want to make sure they have qualified daycare attendants, right? There, there's, there's a fear. There's a, right? Yeah, you're playing on fears. I mean, you, you definitely, anytime you can get emotion into, into your headline, that's what you want. And right. Here, here's another one. Ever felt like your daycare treated your child like a number instead of a little person? Subheadline: how to ensure your child gets personal, loving, caring, one-on-one -on -one attention at daycare. So we didn't even mention it was my daycare. We mentioned daycare and how to make sure you ever felt like your child was just a number. Subheadline: how to ensure your child gets personal, loving, one-on-one -on -one attention. Pretty good. That's another one. You know, I don't want to put them in the daycare, and then, right? Uh, here's another. This is a good one. I like, I like this one because I remember this one. Uh, Barney, you remember Barney the card? Is your daycare's idea of a good educational curriculum watching Barney on TV? Right? So they just stick my kid in front of TV, right? Uh, how would you like your child to be reading at first grade level starting in kindergarten? Right? So now we're pitching on, you know, we've got 22, you know, uh, we got qualified teachers. We got a, an accelerated reading program that we run the kids through. You know, there's your education, right? Uh, there's your educating offer. Educating about education. Yeah. So. yeah, educating about education. Those are kind of fun. Uh, yeah, only out of 48 daycare centers in the metropolitan area, only one was specifically designed and equipped, designed and equipped for the unique needs of accelerated children. All right, there's your differentiator. I'm here to educate your child, our daycare center, educate your child. So you're just trying to find the hot buttons. Like, you, you know, that's what you always talk about with your copywriting. Uh, well, yeah, your headline, if it was a subject line, you could say the only daycare in the metro area that educate that whatever that statement you had there at the end. I mean, I would want to know, is my kid going to that daycare? I mean, you want to pull people out of other daycares, tell them there's only one that does this. And, you know, it's all you don't need to be. That's the other thing. Anytime you're marketing something, you you don't have to have like 85 differentiators. You only need one. If you yeah. can, if you can pick out one thing that makes you different, then you put that in your, in yeah. your copy. This end up being, we end up coming up with 10 little hot buttons. And so like, uh, here's one more, and then I'll tell you a little call to action. So ever wish you knew what was really going on at your child's daycare. There's your headline, your sub headline, revolutionary new technology lets parents see their child at any time from work or home. What is that? That's the nanny cam. Like they do that at the pet. Uh, you know, the pet drop off store nowadays, right? Yeah. Little nanny cam. And then you educate and offer. The offer is 10 things your daycare might not tell you. 
yes, send me the free report, 10 things your daycare might not tell you. So those 10 things were each of those little headlines that I mentioned, and that, so that's your report is really your 10 email you know, drip campaign or postcard. We, we actually did both for this guy, an email and a postcard campaign. Um, but it's interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. We found some hot buttons, which I know you're, you know, that's what you talk about when you're writing a copyright or copyright your lead magnets. Yeah. You actually use those hot points as the headlines, which also fed back to the lead magnet. Yeah, and in, in, the, uh, in the, the lead magnet, a lot of people will make a lead magnet or they'll write 10 emails. You can take those 10 emails, reword them a little and make 10 chapters, 10 short chapters in a lead magnet and boom, you got a real nice lead magnet. You don't want to have them exactly the same, but if somebody downloads your, your lead magnet and they, let's say they read four, four chapters, they don't read the whole thing, but on each chapter, there's a call to action, but then they get the fourth email and they've already read that and they're like, oh, they've read something simpler, similar and now it's in their head. So all of a sudden now they're starting to associate that that is their knowledge, even though they read it before from you, they believe that they came up with the idea. And this right. So watch this. One. So you take this, you know, we're talking about, you know, episode 85, evaluating your marketing message. So you've got a good marketing message. You got 10 hot buttons for daycare, right? Then you hit them off in, in a newspaper, maybe a radio ad. Uh, then we got the uh, postcards. So mail, you want to do a billboards. Then we got our free report. Then we got our email drip campaign, right? So you're starting to hit them. Then we got a joint venture. Uh, who else, you know, comes in contact with working parents, right? So now we got a guide, right? 10 ways, you know, 10 things you wish your daycare center told you, right? So you could cross, but all those are the same marketing message across the different channels because we took the time to evaluate our marketing message and kind of come up with our interrupt, engage, educate and offer. Now that we have that together and the lead magnet, you're the king lead magnet. Now we can use that across all formats, use it with our joint venture partner, use it on, uh, you know, TV ads, uh, uh, email drip campaigns, because our message is clear. We, we, we are after working parents who care about the education of their children, that, that their children are taken care of, that they can see their children on the webcam, right? And now it's easy for us to market because we know what the hot buttons are. And we've addressed them all. And we just continually send out that same message. So like you said, eventually they'll be like, yeah, I do want somewhere where I know the staff is, you know, well-educated. Yeah, I do want it somewhere where my kid can read at first grade level. Yeah, I do want somewhere where I can check in on the webcam and see their, right? So they think it's their own idea by the time because you've just, it's, it's the obvious choice, right? Yeah, well, and, and that's the point is you're trying to, you're trying to leave people know either a yes or no answer. That's, that's what you want. Yes or no. They, there's a fork in the road and they're going to take yes or no. They don't leave people with maybe like, Hey, call me. That's maybe. <laughs> that's right. So that was, this is a great one. I, I really enjoyed this because you know, whether you do the interrupt, engage, educate and offer, right. Interrupt. Here's the headline. Here's your hot button. Here's something important. The uh, engage is the sub headline, you know, us travel, you know, can't travel, tired of being stuck, uh, educate, right. You know, here's some great trips that are inside the U.S. You'll feel like you're in Europe. And then your offer is, you know, your guide to the five best, you know, U.S. destinations or five best destinations, U.S. destinations, but you feel like you're traveling international, whatever your th call to action was, right? Fits right into your pasture formula, you know, person, problem, pain, amplify, aspiration, solution. It's kind of like the educate. Talk about the T for the testimonial or the transformation that you'll give them for making there. And the offer, and then the R was response. You want them to take action. You're telling them to down, you know, ask for the the ten ways to evaluate your daycare. Exactly. So it's it good. It's good stuff. And then once the marketing message is clear, though, it becomes simpler for you to market in general, right? If you don't know what you're selling, which we talked about before, if you don't know what you're selling. It's hard to. If I'm changing my message every time, how do your how do your clients refer you business? They don't know the re. They got their one reason they chose your daycare. They got one reason they chose you as the travel agent, right? Yeah. But that might not be my reason or your reason, right? But if we had, hey, anytime you come across somebody, here's the 10, five best trips to take in the U.S. this, this fall. God, that's really cool. I'd probably send that over to my friends. You know, I got another friend who's talking about being an empty nester and they were thinking about doing something. I might forward that over to them. Yeah. Right? How do you make something go viral? You, 
you got to get the message right. I mean, right. and it was nothing about it was nothing about me. It's nothing about you know. It's not most advertisements are those platitudes. We've been in business forever. We're we're family owned. We take we love your kids. We take care of them. You know, we live in your neighborhood, right? Those are all platitudes, right? We're all selfish individuals. We only care about ourselves. You know, tell, tell me about me. Why would I use you as my travel agent? Not, but you're not selling me on you as a travel agent. You're helping me make a decision. Five great places to go when you're an empty nester. Yeah. That's what you want. Me. Nobody wants a travel agent. They want, they want a vacation. They want a result. Yeah. That, that's a good, nobody wants a travel agent. They want a result. They want a vacation. They want a vacation. That's right. Yeah. Well, good. This is covered all. Good. So Matt, where can, uh, where can we find you? Yeah. So uh, Matt and Dave, so we've got our profitability MD. Uh, we got Matt at profitabilitymd.com, Dave at profitabilitymd.com, putting together a um, mastermind group that we talk about these kind of things, honing in your marketing message, bounce through these ideas on your business. Uh, we got profitabilitymd.com, which is where this podcast is. We've got the YouTube channel, Profitability MD. And then we've got our podcast, Profitability MD, available wherever you get your podcast. You can find me over at LinkedIn, Matt Hudgens. And uh, I got my coaching website, 10xprofitblueprint.com. But really, you should go to Profitability MD. That's kind of what we're talking about. How about you, buddy? Well, you, uh, you, like you said, Dave, at profitabilitymd.com. And um, if you're interested in, um, in our mastermind, uh, just send us an email and then we'll set up a call. And uh, we don't just accept anybody. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, it's like-minded individuals. And um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn at uh, David Mulvaney. And so I'm David Mulvaney or David T. Mulvaney on most, uh, um, most of the popular um, platforms, platforms, et cetera. So great show today, Matt. All right, buddy. This was good. Have a good one. You too. Take care.